Trigger warning. This video contains references to suicide, mental health, and childhood trauma that some viewers may find distressing. If you need resources or support, visit www.beyondblue.org.au for free counselling open 24-7 for everyone in Australia. Or visit Lifeline for 24-hour crisis support on www.lifeline.org.au. Please proceed with caution and exercise self-care. So I found positive is um, very um, because that's a local um, company and they I had the meeting with my um, coach then Trevor. He um, we had we went through our situation and then we uh, we the yeah we've been informed that yes you can go ahead with your equity and other stuff. So I think uh, yeah we also have the mortgage broker. They help us to um, to get the lending to get our um, investment property. So I think just after yeah six months we joined positive. You're listening to Property Investor Tales, stories from the front yard. Here's your host, Hayley Beavis. Hello and welcome to Property Investor Tales, stories from the front yard. My name is Hayley Beavis and I am a property consultant here at Positive Real Estate, where we help people build wealth through property. Today, I am joined by Lee and Jing, who have an amazing outlook on life. Born in China and made the move to New Zealand, now in Brisbane, Australia, where they are living the good life. They talk through the challenges of not being able to service a loan, how they pick themselves up, work through challenges and got themselves into a great situation to move forward and purchase some fantastic properties. Some of these properties today are worth 2.5 times more than their original purchase price only six years ago. They also talk through how it's important not to take advice from family and friends, how, how important it is to have personal and property buffers, and to invest in yourself and take massive action. If you don't change, nothing will change for you. Enjoy this conversation with Lee and Jing. Okay, hello and welcome to Property Investor Tales. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. And um, first of all, let's kick off with a bit about your background. Um, you know, you have an incredible story in, you know, your property investing journey over the last few years. Um, and it, it'll be awesome to share it uh, with everyone today. So what is your background? You know, where do you live? Uh, you live in the same hometown as me, but tell me a little bit about yourselves. Yeah, um, yeah, I might start with myself. Um, yeah, I was born in China. Um, I went to New Zealand back in 2002, that's what, 20 years ago, um, and I started there. And um, yeah, I lived there for the last 17 years. And then we moved to Brisbane like uh, three years ago. So really enjoyed yeah. living here. Beautiful. And, yeah. And what do you do for work? Um, both me and my wife, Jean, we're both um, mental health nurse. We work in the hospital. So yeah, so we've been working over the last um, year, um, I think uh, 12, 13 years. Beautiful. And I bet you find that job quite rewarding. I mean, you would see, you know, a lot of th different things being a mental health nurse. So tell me a little bit about, um, you know, your role and some tools that you use in that role as well. Um, you know, that probably help you in, in the outside world with property investing and so forth. Yeah, of course. Yes. Um, it's quite challenging for our work, I guess. Um, yeah. So been look after the uh, yeah um the clients with mental health issues. Some of them can be very challenging because um yeah. yeah looking at their background or their um you know childhood sometimes can be you know um quite um yeah quite sad to say but um I think we are doing a good job I guess especially for people with suicidal thoughts and all sorts of um yeah mental health issues and um. Yeah, I've been quite um I yeah, quite enjoy my my job anyway and I'm happy to have to help people and see people progressing and recover from you know the hard time. And yeah, yeah I guess um it's quite rewarding. Yeah. Yeah, I, I absolutely. Enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that Lee, especially, you know, I've seen some of the posts that you put on on Facebook as as well. And, you know, mm -hmm. you're quite positive in the way your outlook and the way that you approach situations. 
So I really appreciate you doing that. And I think everybody else does as well with your outlook and, you know, your positivity. It certainly shines throughout the group. So keep doing what you're doing in that space. Thank you. Thank you. I think we just need to be more positive, you know, um, we'll be dealing with um, stress and challenges. Yeah. So we learn a lot from our work as well. Yeah. That's, that's, um, that help our um, investment journey as well, I guess. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So Tell me a little bit about your experience prior to joining PRE. Um, I believe you joined in about 2017. Is that correct? Yeah, that was um, five years ago. Um, yeah. So yeah, um, I think uh, because um, I I'm very um, interested in uh, in um, property. Actually, um, mm -hmm. I remember, you know, in the old days, uh, even before I I started to work, and then I've been doing lots of research. Yeah. Um, where that was back in New Zealand, and um, so yeah, I've been yeah doing a lot of research about the property market, and uh, from my background, I guess my my dad is the um, um, business owner. He he ran the business back in China, but now he's retired. Um, yeah, uh, just speaking from his experience, like he been he bought a couple of um. Yeah, properties in the capital city back in China. That was back in two thousand two. Um, the capital gain is so that's great. Like even from, uh, three hundred k to like a four to six mil. In like wow, a, we've seen like a fifteen year period. That's the booming. So I I realized property and investment is just very um yeah um it's a way of creating wealth. So yeah, I guess. Um, I think one reason probably um, I'm starting to looking at property investment. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And um, you guys bought yourself your first house in New Zealand back in 2010. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, that was when I started my first job. Yep. And uh, I got and both me and Jing had been saving during that time. Yep. Um, that was um, yeah, the, the property is. A little bit cheap compared to nowadays then. Yeah. So um, I guess it was uh, the, our first property is like a two bedroom house, not flash or um, you know, just a standard house. And uh, we paid for two seventy k during yep. that time. And uh, yeah, so that's very lucky we we bought it then, and um, yeah, we used equity to buy the second house. Fantastic. Yeah, so able to kind of leverage off that first property to get exactly. you into the second. Yeah. And yeah. New Zealand's a very different market to Australia, isn't isn't it, in the way that you invest? and Yeah. 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 Um, it is very different. So we learned the difference between the two different markets. Yep. And, um, yeah. Yeah, awesome. So um, what was holding you back um, prior to joining PRE, you know, previous to 2017? What do you feel like was holding you back throughout those years to, you know, really kick off your investing journey? Yeah, um, I think a couple of things, probably other property investors um, or people uh, investing in property probably have the same feeling because the market is, you know, back in 2008 and um, I know the GFC and things happening during that time, a lot of people, um, yeah, don't want to buy or just the uh, hold. But I think we also have the fear, you know, um, uh, how you know if the property not increasing value, what's the point to buy or yeah. invest in properties? A lot of things we, I, th I guess, um, yeah, the old mindset, um, mm -hmm. just stop during that time. We um, we don't have an opportunity to speak to people who's been there, done that. So yeah, yeah um. I guess also because um, our financial situation not that great in that time because um, I think Jing was pregnant and only yes. one salary and very hard to get a loan to get, um, um, you know, the next property, I guess. Yeah, so that opens so, up to, to the next thing, right? I mean, yeah. when you guys um, moved across to Australia, you guys were already members of Positive Real Estate and, you know, you'd purchased That's, a couple of properties along the way. Yeah, and, um, Tell me about uh, Treehouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Treehouse. Yes. Um, that was uh, even before moving to um, Brisbane. We we want to um to buy property before we um 
move here. I get a lot of um, probably Kiwis won't do the same. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we did realize that not that easy, you know. That's the um, yeah, it's more like a roller coaster for us um, yeah. during that time because we initially we paid for the deposit um, during that time. And uh, we thought, yeah, because uh, during that time, I'm the only one working, uh, even working as the, you know, in- essential worker, but moving from one country to another, you don't have the credibility. You still have to start from the scratch, I guess. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I was the one working. I tried to work as much as possible. Sometimes I work six days a week um, to try to get a lending. Um, but um, unfortunately, we were being told by the broker um, we couldn't get a lending because the survey thing, yeah, um, yeah, just for one salary is not that um, helpful. Um, so we, yeah, um, but I never give up. I <laughs> trying to talk to different brokers. Um, yeah, luckily we found one broker who said, uh, yeah, probably you can cross the line. So we said, oh yeah, we got some hope. And um, yeah, so we've been waiting for it, and but things happened but just before um, settlement for Treehouse. Yeah. And the broker told us, no, you couldn't get a loan because um, you know uh, something happened with the lender. They're not happy to um, yeah to give you guys the loan. So I uh, thought, so, yeah, that's quite stressful actually, very yeah. stressful because with one um, income and also you know they couldn't um, yeah settle the property and. Um, yeah that's quite a but uh, luckily i think the good thing happened we uh i had a chat with um, my property coach here told also i talked to sam about um yeah our situation yeah and we uh luckily we um we roll over the deposit to um to the next area um project trailers yeah you guys uh, um, i mean to be able to turn lemons into lemonade in that instance where, you know, you guys were in a position where you could put, you know, trying to settle that um, particular property initially and couldn't, but mm. I know that you tried your very hardest. I've, I was obviously chatting to you at the time as well. And yeah, um, you yeah. really pushed through a lot of those boundaries to keep yeah. moving forward. And yeah. with, you know, rolling your deposit into the next um, area of property, you guys, you know, will have made quite a lot of money on that one nowadays um, by the time that does come around for uh, for settlement. So with um with your your next steps, I mean, once you joined Positive Real Estate, what were the things you were able to learn at Positive Real Estate to keep you moving forward, um, the support and things like that? So tell me a little bit about your journey, you know, post joining Positive Real Estate and how you've progressively moved forward. Oh, yeah, that was, um, yeah, it's a good story, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah. you know, it is um, a good story. You're right. <laughs> a lot of good stories. Anyway, so yeah, I was the one, probably I was influenced by my dad. He's a um, business yeah. owner. He He's not like a nine to five job um, sort of person. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I was always probably I was born with the gene. Sometimes I always want to, you know, run my own business or do some investment. Um, back in the old days, when I was back in New Zealand, I've been read the book um How Rich That Poor Dad by Suzuki. Yes. Um, I guess a lot of investors have been reading that book. If and, anyone um, hasn't read that listening, make sure that you read Rich Dad Poor yeah, Dad. <laughs> read that book not once, maybe twice, many yeah. times. <laughs> Um, yeah, so anyway, so um, I guess, um, yeah, learning the property investment is very solid, very, um, you know, creating wells is one of the best strategies probably. And uh, so I've been uh, to different webinars back in New Zealand, including yep. uh, Rich That Poor Dad and also Positive. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in terms of... Um, you know, the, the properties that you've, you know, purchased over the years as well. I mean, um, you've got a, a pretty amazing story with a lifestyle property over in New Zealand that, mm-hmm. you know, you purchased for, uh, some would say a reasonable amount of money, um, but probably, um, you know, not too bad. But now, you know, that's more than doubled for you in a, how long ago was that that you purchased? Um, I guess it was about six years ago. Six years. And it's more yeah. than more than doubled in that time. Yeah, I think uh, thanks to COVID, probably they also helped. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yes, I think we can thank COVID for a lot of things during that time. Yeah, right? we do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. A lot of people feeling is stressful, but there are always opportunities for people who are, you know, um, ready for it and yeah. being prepared. That's a, a really good point to make. You know, when we're moving through different markets and times and mm. hearing things like, the media and, you know, you've really got to put your head in the sand with that and, you know, look at the opportunity for what it's worth at the time yeah. and, um, and keep moving through, which is exactly what you guys did um, throughout yeah. that period. So Exactly. Um, yeah. I guess another thing um, um, when I joined Positive, um, because uh, that's why um, I met Sam when yeah. I joined the bus tour, like I think in... Uh, yeah, I think 2017, just, yeah, yeah. I mean, 2019 before we moved here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we come here, I come here to Brisbane, had a bus tour then, and uh, learned a lot about the Brisbane market and the whole yeah. Australian market. And also I went to Melbourne bus tour with them as well and learned heaps from him. Yeah. Was yeah. Awesome. Sam's amazing. And I mean, those bus tours bring back the bus tour, right? <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. We want it back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to keep nudging Sam to, um, to bring back the bus tour because that was, you know, an amazing day to jump on there and, and get a wealth yeah. of knowledge from Sam. Exactly. To yeah. You yeah. also talk to unlike-minded people. Right. Oh so, yeah. You have to share the same experience. That's um, good. Of it. That's a good way of, um, yeah, learn from each other. Yeah, absolutely. Um, with your, uh, you know, your friends and family, and do do you talk much to people about your investing journey along the way? Do you know? Do you apart from probably people that you meet here at Positive Real Estate? Yes, I guess. Uh, for investor, property investor, I guess a lot of us don't talk to um, um, you know, um, yeah, talk to them about the um, property investment. Because sometimes family can give you wrong advice or, you know, mm. and worry about you, I guess, because um, from my experience, like uh, my in-law, when we're talking about investment, property investment, they are worried, but they couldn't sleep if they, yeah. <laughs> they hear too much about, you know, how much loan you get from the bank, are you able to pay them back? And yeah, they don't understand about the um, leveraging and good debts and bad debts. So yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's easier just not to mention it, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you you can talk to people who have the same um, mindset, like yeah. you know, um, they understand because they yeah. they've been there, they've done that, and they understand um what you're doing, and they support yeah. you. But I guess you you can't just talk to any um single um yeah family or friend. They don't yeah go through the process like yeah. Yeah, hundred percent agree with you there. <laughs> There's um a real select people, select few that you you know you talk to. Yeah. Um. So uh, tell me about what you would consider your best deal. I know that you've probably got too many best deals to choose from in your portfolio, which is an amazing thing. Um, yeah. Tell me about your, your best deal or your best deal. Well, yeah. Um. I think before this podcast i have a chat with dream about our best deal like you yeah. know which one we should talk about um we uh, both of us agree that i think the first house probably is the the one help us to get today to yeah. that situation you know even though we we sold it um after 12 years but uh, i guess that's the uh, yeah that's one of the best deals help us you know um create equity and yeah. then, um, yeah, the cash flow and uh, help us to, yeah, yeah, get where we are today. Yeah, yeah help you leverage off that property to purchase yeah. Yeah. other properties. Yeah. yeah. Even Absolutely. though it's not one of the most expensive one in the portfolio, but I guess, yeah, yeah. it's one of the probably best deal we, we have to say, yeah, help us, you know, um, yeah, get everything, yeah, just yeah. help us the um, the portfolio to grow. Yeah, yeah, that was probably the stepping stone for, mm. you know, mm. the, the next and the next and the next, which is... That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and timing yeah. on that property, you did really well as well. You purchased that, you know, 2010 um, and, mm. you know, being able to sell it for... I think it would have been, yeah, more than double as well, right? Yeah, I think, yeah, that yeah. like 2.5 times because uh, we yeah. bought that one for 270 and sold it for 700. So. Yeah. 
in in a 12 year journey that's um that's pretty amazing right it, it is yeah we're very glad with that yeah yeah, yeah. congratulations thank you <laughs> Alrighty. and what have been off the back of you know what's your best deal what have been your biggest lessons that you've learned throughout your property investing journey yeah good question a lot of lessons we learned for the last okay. um i guess 10 years since we um yeah um we Renting our first property 12 years ago. Um, I guess, um, yeah, like what um, Samuel Jason always to say about the safety buffers. Um, I yeah. guess that's a good learning for us because moving from New Zealand to um, to Brisbane like um, three years ago, we we kind of don't have much saving and we also don't prepare much for, um, you know, safety buffer for all the properties. So yeah, ideally, I guess we should have like a five to 10 grand um, safety buffer for each of the investment properties. Um, but during that time, we, yeah, I don't think we um, we prepared pretty well. So when we moved here to Brisbane, because I'm the only one working during that time and um, our income not that great. And, and also, um, you know, um, yeah, salary wise, we were very struggling. We we're very struggling because um, I still remember um, during the COVID time, I worked in the hospital. I only worked like a two days every month for a month, for a month yeah. probably. Yeah, the, yeah. So luckily, we listened to Sam. I guess he supported a lot during that time to the members, to the clients, and we Absolutely. we paused all the loans back in New Zealand, and uh, we used the passive income to help us. Um, yeah, just um, uh, yeah, just to get the um our actually uh, for our living during that period of time. It's just uh, yeah, not stressful. So after that, we learn all. You know, we all learn from the mystics and. And then, yeah, now I'm prepared, well prepared um, for the safety buffers yeah. into the future. Um, yeah. Yeah, which is amazing because over the last few years, I mean, you guys have been able to get yourself in a, you know, a really good position by purchasing a couple more properties as well and mm. you know, getting those safety buffers under control. So yeah. I completely agree with you. Safety buffers are, you know, personal buffers, property buffers, they are something that are very, very important and important along your property investing journey because mm. even simple things like, I mean, it's not, not I shouldn't call it simple, but investment rate, um, invest, interest rate rises, sorry. Um, things like interest rate rises. And if you mm. don't have your interest rates locked in at that point yeah. in time, yeah. of course, your repayments are increasing. So ensuring that you have those property buffers and those personal buffers in place Exactly. It's realistically a sleep at night factor, right? Yeah, yeah. It allows you yeah. to go to bed and, and be okay yeah, with where you're at. Yeah, you should be able to pass a sleep test anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And um, what is the weirdest or funniest thing that's happened um, along your property investing journey? Um. Well, I was thinking about the one, like uh, we talked about probably um, – um, yeah, earlier about the um, the area uh, tree house, like yeah. we might just uh, elaborate a little bit more on that. Yeah. Um, yeah, like during that time, we uh, we yeah we've been told we can't settle the the um, the property, yep. so uh, yeah, quite stressful during that time. And uh, luckily, we got the support from the PRE team, and you know, um, especially Sam, and we. We roll over to the trailers during that time. Yeah. And um, yeah, I because during that time we don't know what what's what's going to happen. Um, mm. because you know, um, if you lose the steel, well, what's happening? Because um, yeah, we we still have to get somewhere to um to live. So instead, we we rented uh, in treehouse. Um. So and also we we roll over the deposit to um to um trailers. So yeah. Um during that time because the um the I guess um eighteen months ago, you know, um the government always um yeah send money to people to buy more um, property or the homeland package. So yeah we because during that time we we, we sold the house in New Zealand. Um yep. just uh yeah, so we used the some of the money temporary deposit to buy um um the, the house in Flora. 
Yes. So, yeah. So, um, and then, yeah, almost finished anyway. The Plara House will be um, settled and the completion will be on Thursday this week. Amazing. That's yeah. exciting. <laughs> Even though after two month delay, but uh, yeah, finally. Yeah. Um, that's good in this uh, in this market anyway. So oh, totally. That's yeah. um, pretty pretty um, good for for current times. Yeah. Um. So also the um. Yeah. So we still got a bit cash in hand. So yep. that's why we look at other opportunities. So yep. when Sam mentioned the one um, Agora in uh, Victoria and uh, Melbourne, we saw. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's one works pretty well for us because they will be settling. In, uh, two years time so yep. yeah off the plan was a good strategy for you to stay in the market and yeah so we um we paid the deposit and then um yeah we wait for settlement in two years time i guess yeah um same back in um in uh yeah our tree house and we saw oh yes we lose we lost one deal but we got three deals yeah Yes, that's, um, that's pretty incredible, actually, you know, being able to um, look at the silver lining in all of that as well to go, you know what, we, we missed out on that one, but that's given mm. us the opportunity to move forward on three other, you know, really awesome properties. Yeah. You know, you're looking at two, some quality blue chip properties there within your portfolio that, you know, have already made a substantial amount of money during that time as well. So yeah, we are. Yeah. yeah, congratulations for you guys for Thank seeing that you. silver lining and moving forward and giving yourselves yeah. that opportunity as well. Yeah, I guess the flight of quality, um, yeah, yeah, property is the future. So we really um, absolutely, to, yeah. Well, you've certainly got a couple of those. Um, with with Aria, I mean, you guys live in uh, one of the Aria buildings at the mm. moment, and mm. you know, you you popped a video up on the positive mentoring clients mm. the other day of the rooftop, and God, yeah. you're, you're living luxury, aren't you? Yeah, we're just living the dream, I guess. <laughs> yeah, living yeah. the dream. That's a good yeah. way. <laughs> yeah. Good way to put it. That's um, yeah. it, that's amazing. It's it's really awesome to hear that. Um, if you could give your younger self some advice, um, what would that advice be today? That's a good question. Um, I guess, um, I guess, um, if I can get, you know, financial education, yep. um, you know, investing yourself and, uh, always, um, talking to people who have the same, um, you know, mindset Yeah. and, um, yeah, take, take action, take massive actions. Um, I guess um, a lot of people are just talking about it, never take actions. So um, yeah. if you don't change, you know, no, nothing will change for you. Yeah. Yeah, that's a huge one, isn't it? You know, you've mm. got to you've got to really take the opportunity and want the opportunity and keep moving forward because you can sit there and sit on your hands and and think, oh no, it's not working for me. You know, much like the treehouse property right you could have just mm. gone well it's yeah. not worked out yeah. for me that's yeah. it um whether yeah. as you've really I, you know pushed forward. yeah i i guess a lot of people will give up and yeah. um yeah i guess because i have a lot of friends you know they they're talking about property but they never take action to to invest the yeah. um yeah i guess um you have to yeah to be uh, able to take action that's the main thing and mm. you know learn from your mistakes and uh you know, you won't make the mistake again next time. And yeah, you learn yeah. from all the, the mistakes, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. So that would also roll into, um, you know, if someone was, anybody that's listening to this podcast um, today, hello, everybody that's listening. <laughs> um, but, you know, what would you say to someone that's nervous about taking the next steps? Um, where, where would you tell them to start in this instance? Well, I guess uh, the main thing is, um, yeah, um, probably you need to have like a positive people um, around you or mm. who have the experience, who got the, been there, done that. And also don't listen to the yeah. media because the media not always telling the truth. Um, yeah, just be prepared if you want to go ahead with this property investment. That's one of the best investments, I guess. Um, you have to be, yeah, um, just prepared, well prepared for challenges. Um, yeah. 
into the future because um but um me and jeans very enjoy um being a property investor i guess yeah and also doing positive is a bad decision we made we got the coach and we got the six-star team so you you get to yeah you have to have the six-star team to help you create wells mm. the main thing absolutely and you listen to a lot of um, Sam and Jason's podcasts yes. as well. Yeah. That's right, um, yes. Yeah, very active mm. in the, you know, mentoring, listening to mentoring, listening to Jason and Sam. So yeah. what do you what do you feel as though you get out of a lot of those, you know? Yeah, podcasts? I do. Um, I mentioned that. Um, I really recommend people who listen to this podcast, listen <laughs> to uh, Sam and Jason's podcast, and yeah. you learn heaps of information uh, from there. And, um, you know, so you can just um, actually um, learn from that and then uh, it will help you with your um, property investment journey. Yeah. And your mindset, right? Of course. Mindset of, yeah. You mentioned the the media. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And also, yeah, I think uh, you guys also doing a good job with the property investor tales, you know. So, yeah, we do learn and help people to um, get into the, um, the property ladder. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. You know, you've got to you've got to shut off from some of those things like the media. You've got to, you know, listen to the reality of what's really happening in the current mm. market because a lot of that, you know, media attention is just fear mongering or you know, mm. clickbait. You could call it. So, keeping in the right frame of mind to keep yourself moving forward. And as you said, put have a buffer in place, and you know, you you can keep on cruising without um without too much stress um, on your plate. So a very big congratulations to you guys for, you know, where you've, where you've got to in a a pretty short period of time um, for Mm. a lot of people. So massive congratulations to you guys for taking, you know, lemons, turning them into lemonade, keeping on moving through buying quality properties, which has been, you know, one, probably one of the main things for you guys that has been able to keep moving you forward as well. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. No no problem. All right. So thank you so much for joining me on the Property Investor Tales podcast today. I'm sure that there will be a lot of people that will get quite a lot out of this podcast just based on your positive mindset and um, really incredible what you guys do for a job as well. So I congratulate you on that. Say a very big well done. Um, You know, helping society in that way is pretty amazing. So congratulations on your property journey as well. Um, you know, we'll keep moving through, keep building that portfolio and um, the future is looking very, very bright for you guys, as well as, you know, current times today. Thank you for having us, Haley. Thank no you. No problem at all. Thanks for listening to Property Investor Tales. Remember to subscribe so you get notified every time a new episode drops. As you can guess, we love hearing people's property investor tales. So if you'd like to share yours, then please get in touch with us via email at Positive Investor Tales at Positive Mentor com.au we also love your feedback and would appreciate a five-star review over on apple podcasts or spotify remember you can watch all of these podcasts over on youtube at positive mentor or at positive until then take care and bye for now